Welcome to Morning Talk Show. Today is my interview with Mark Sargent. He is a leading light in the Flat Earth movement and subject of the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve, which I recommend watching. I've been interested in Mark for a while because he's the likable, accessible face of the Flat Earth movement. And uh, so, as I suspected, he was a really great guy to talk to, very open and honest, uh, willing to talk about anything. So I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Um, for the first few minutes, I hadn't actually pushed record on my camera. So it's just Mark for a little bit, and then I come in. If you like this kind of content, then like and subscribe. I'd like to bring you more conversations with interesting uh, people who are sometimes off the beaten path and sometimes not. Uh, thanks very much for watching. All right, uh, I'm talking to Mark Sargent, the leading light and uh, <laughs> likable guy uh, of the Flat Earth Movement, um, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, and uh, but I'm not going to talk about myself first. I would like uh, I will talk about my my relationship to the Flat Earth and 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 we can get into that. But briefly, for someone watching who doesn't know. Um, about you, can you tell me how you got into the flat Earth? Like your introduction and your story uh, about that. Sure, I had an opinion by 2014. I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy that you could think of, and I still do. But I still hadn't looked at flat Earth because flat Earth is ridiculous. It's silly, and nobody ever wants to look at it. I don't encourage anyone listening to this to look at it. Right. But I looked at it, and I thought, okay, I can shut this thing down in a few days. Nine right. months later beginning of 2015, I gave up trying to shut it down. Uh, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it or debunk it or whatever you want. And so I made a series of videos and put them out on the internet called Flat Earth Clues, mm -hmm. which is more or less a cry for help. It said, okay, guys, I can't prove the globe anymore in a court of law. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I screwed up here. And here's right. my email address, my phone number, my real name trying to be as transparent as possible and yeah. that's how i got into it and that was four years ago yeah and now here we are conferences and a documentary and everything yeah. else later yeah here, here we are yeah so. i loved the documentary i'd been waiting for that for quite a while and mm -hmm. i honestly would have gone to the conference in edmonton if it hadn't been uh a little pricey for for me oh but no that's, it's all right <laughs> um no. Yeah, but a little bit of my background, I guess Flat Earth has been my guilty pleasure for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Around the t about three years ago, I I'm guessing it was about three years ago, um, my daughter was born and uh, to, to give my wife some sleep, uh, my daughter and I would sleep on a little bed in our living room. And for some reason, even though I was ridiculously tired, I couldn't sleep. And so I brought up flat earth videos and when did you actually get on the scene when did you uh like when did you start making videos in earnest you said the the the, the first video i made literally was february 10th 2015 2015 that, okay okay yeah, 2015. um so i didn't know about you at the time and uh I, I watched so many of these things and and uh and uh, I didn't know exactly what was keeping me going with it because I never fully, I mean, I never got convinced. I would get drawn in, as you know, the feeling of, with the conspiracy, you get drawn into that world. And um, But uh, um, basically, I, I felt like there was something there that I couldn't kind of, uh, I couldn't stop thinking about, even though I never got fully convinced. And at the time, the leading I don't know, the, the, the most well-spoken person that I could find in the movement was Eric Dubay. Sure. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I came pretty quickly to realize that that he was a bit of a troubled individual, uh, or Yay. at least that's, that's my take on it. Sorry, Eric, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, I don't want to slander anybody. But basically, I, I was excited about the idea of there being a leading light who could actually talk to people, in, you know, in, um, and then uh, I heard you talk to, um, uh, what was his name? The British guy. Um, uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, the guy that was married to Katy Perry, yeah. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Yeah, I heard you talk mm -hmm. to Russell Brand. 
And I was like, oh, here's our guy. Finally, we've got our we've got our guy, you know, to talk to the world about this. And sure. uh, and so I've been thinking a lot about what it means. And, and, and it, it's really definitely in my head, like when I when that Antarctica Treaty happened and when, you know, when the Falcon Heavy happened, I went straight to YouTube to get your reaction, which I knew would uh, would be uh, well, I knew that it wouldn't convince you basically immediately. Right. So, um, I guess what I'm wondering is, uh, I've noticed there's three types of videos about the flat earth. Mm -hmm. People who agree, people who believe the earth is flat, people who disagree and are generally interviewing you very angry, which Mm -hmm. always is always saddening to me, or people who don't involve a flat earther at all and make a video about well, here's why people believe in the flat earth, you know, and it's so condescending. I'm sure you've seen yeah. some of those, but they're like, well, some people are crazy. And uh, I, I just, it's always been so unsatisfying to me because I don't think that you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so I wanted to talk to you about what's going on in society that's actually making a space for the flat earth. So um, okay. forgive me, I'm trying not to be wordy and do all the talking because I'm no, mo- okay. most okay. interested in what you have to say. But um, to me, I see the Flat Earth Movement as a fascinating case of grassroots, like true grassroots. Like I've never gotten the right. feeling that there's anybody like with big money pulling the strings. There's no George Soros. There's, you know what I mean? Like uh, I don't get the feeling that you're a super wealthy guy who's keeping it going for... Uh, you know, some nefarious reason. And and so it's like, sure, there's always been conspiracy theorists and there's always been conspiracy theories. But right. this is the big one. This is the one that encompasses all other theories. And I'm sure people, you know, I'm sure that there are even people in the Flat Earth Movement who go a lot further than you. Yeah. So what is it about the psychology of the West in 2019 that is drawing people towards this movement. And so I don't want to just ask you that question directly because it's a really, it's a really difficult question to ask. So I, I have some, I I, could, I yeah. Could, Oh yeah, I go ahead. Yes, shot, sure. Actually, I'll ask you directly. Uh, why, why, why is it happening now? I mean, that question's actually came up even in 2015, 2016. It's like, right. why now? Why yeah. here? Why, you know, flat earth is, is not a new thing. It's been around for a long, yeah. long time. In fact, even before globe earth, there was flat earth right. and flat earth was the thing for, you know, I don't care what people say. No, no, we just proved it thousands of years. It's like, really? Cause I've got some wonderful illustrations of every culture ever drawing the same snow globe forever. You know, the, right. you know, where it's a flat enclosed world with a dome over the top. Mm-hmm. And, um, sorry, there's a little bit of an echo, but we're okay. Oh, is that the, sh- oh, you're okay. Something? You're okay. Okay. So why now? Three three big things. One, of course, would be high speed internet. Two would be social media, and three would be oh, I don't know. How about six billion smartphones? Yeah, in the world, uh, we can now disseminate information everywhere very very quickly, if not instantaneously. I mean, if you wanted to send out uh, a major headline across to all countries simultaneously, you could right. do that now. Right. Um. That and people, for whatever reason, and I think we're actually kind of helping this, is the combination of it's a weird it's a weird thing in the United States where we've become very 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 polarized, even more polarized than than ever before. You know, you you identify by who you vote with or what your demographic is. I mean, you really identify with it now. I mean, yeah. if you're a vegan, it's like anyone who's not a right. vegan is your enemy. If you're not a Democrat, you're a Republican. Yeah, and so on and so on and so on. But you combine that with a lack of hate speech where nothing is tolerated anymore. So you can't go after any any particular demographic group. Mm. So we're not supposed to yell at, you know, we're, we're not supposed to criticize, oh, who are the big three that are always picked on? Um, Jewish people, black people, and women, mm-hmm. right? And, and okay. then everybody else. And so all of a sudden you've got flat earth. Well, you can't, yes, you can pick on them, but you can't pick on them as much as you used to be able to. Okay. Where, you know, back back in the day. So now it's like it's almost like this hatred slash acceptance that's, right. that's happening. Where right. you've got you're right. There's there's some people it's like, yeah, well, flat earth there. In fact, the documentary was a perfect example of that. Where 
they were perfectly fine filming it and literally they filmed almost the entire movie it's like well they're harmless they're not they're not affecting anyone really you know they're just a zany bunch of people and then all of a sudden they got to the conference and that 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone and that's when the tone changed that's when it's mm. like okay okay now we got to take this more seriously because you know for the children right and yeah. so they it's this weird paradox uh and mm. that and of course come on let's face it it's the most interesting if if the universe runs off novelty it is the most interesting thing we've had in media in decades oh i mean what what story is more interesting than flat earth absolutely and i think that's i mean i think that's been my thing you know and i i've never you know i guess i've had a few chuckles occasionally but i've never been in general i've it's not been my interest to laugh at this phenomena um right. and and so i think that i'm kind of some kind of weird personality type where i can actually handle real diversity of thought i think that's that's something that i that i appreciate about the flat earth but did you laugh at it in the beginning yeah yeah i mean that's just it and that and by the way that speaks to the power of the topic everybody hates this thing <laughs> everybody hates flat earth i mean i hated it even more i used to collect antique globes that was one of my little mm. hobbies i'm not yeah. kidding you for so the record how, how i, I know I this stuff because i literally have watched your videos but I, i'm glad you're saying it for the sake yeah of yeah i mean it it's so it is if everyone starts out in the same point, which is they hate it, and then there's a big chunk of people now, it's like, you know what? Not that bad. It's actually quite feasible. Right. I find that with any other topic. It's it's right. so it's such a strange thing. Yeah, I think that you have a really good point about its kind of novelty and alienness, though, um, because people kind of love to hate it, but like you say, they're not sure exactly if they should be mad about it, like what it's doing wrong. But, the, the, you know, the closest thing I've seen is, uh, is, is people who feel that science denial is, right. is this major, major problem. And I, I guess I, I'm sympathetic to that idea in theory that, you know, like people who say there's no climate change, if you're a firm climate change believer, then that really angers you. And if someone believes in the flat earth, it's sort of like, okay, you're also denying science. And so, you know, uh, so you're denying climate change. I don't know. Personally, I'm not angry about it. And I think that it is, I, I actually, you know, I don't think we're working towards this world where everybody believes the same thing. I, that does not right. seem like what we're going to do. So, you know, um, I appreciate, I, I, I kind of feel like the flat earth is flying. Well, this is a lot of alliteration. The flat earth is flying the flag of uh, real, real intellectual diversity in the world. And sure. so um, in that way, I wish you well. Um, and one you. thing I want I did want to, um, touch on briefly is the, um, is what part, uh, like religious faith or pseudo religious faith plays in the flat earth, uh, movement. Like, how would you, how would you describe your relationship to any kind of faith? My relationship started out pretty easy. I was raised, uh, in a fairly strong born again, Christian home where church wasn't just on Sundays. You also had youth group and uh, vacation Bible school and even camp Malibu, which was up in, in Canada or still is it's still very popular in the Christian community. Uh, but then I got, I fell away from that because I left the Island. I, you know, I grew up on a, a rural Island up in the Northwest of the United States, up North of Seattle. Okay. Near um, near uh, Vancouver and, and Victoria and places okay. like that. I mean, in fact, you could see uh, uh, Victoria from just just a few miles up the road here. Awesome. My uh, my yeah. wife has been to Malibu many times. Camp, oh, well, there you Malibu. go. Yeah, she was a young yeah. wiper. Yeah, so. I I went. Ooh, I went back in the eighties. <laughs> I went. I was Camp Malibu was a different place back then. Yeah. I don't know why I was speaking with a British accent. Please do. So. Uh, and then I got into university, and I know you, you Canadians uh, or call it university because um, college. Uh, college is a completely different thing. Sure. Although down here in the states, college and university are exactly the same word. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I'm I originally American, so uh, I know that divide as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to college here, but in the states, I might have said university. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I lived a year in Victoria. I was told, but pretty much in no uncertain terms. It was like, do not do not say college when you're up in Canada if you're talking about university, because yeah. a college is a technical college and a university right. is a university. Yeah, so, okay. Elitism. But down here, whatever. So anyway, uh, 
the short version was I got into the tech field, fell away from religion. And when I was out on my own living in Colorado for 20 years, uh, I also fell away from, from the church and I can't, in fact, I never attended church when I was over there unless it was a wedding or a funeral. I never went to, to a church and then I got into flat earth and all that changed. Um, it immediately snapped me back into spirituality and not, not to where I was going to church every Sunday. In fact, it was a deeper understanding of spirituality mm. where, and I've heard this from a lot of people in the community. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, for those who don't know, uh, at least half of the American flat earth community members are strong Christians. Mm -hmm. And yes, the other four major religions play a part, but Christian Christianity is definitely the biggest, uh, mostly because of the people who by Bible literalists, literalists who, went into the to the Bible, King James, and with a fine-tooth comb and said, look, pretty much every chapter or verse, with the exception of Isaiah 40, 22, talks about a flat world. Mm. What and does Isaiah 40, I even, 22 I, say? I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, what does Isaiah 40, 22 say? Do you know oh, oh, I'm sorry. Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Okay. But even that is tough. Because right, because it could be round, and, but a circle. Yeah, yeah. In the ancient Hebrew, I mean, circle flat. is not globe. It's not ball. It's not sphere. It's it's circle. A dinner plate is circular. Your dining room table is circular. Uh, anyway, right. so it was it was really, really interesting because I, there's, a, there's a real quandary down here where pastors are hanging on to Isaiah 40, 22, like it's got veto power over the rest of uh, the rest of Christianity. I mean, including Genesis and Isaiah mm -hmm. and... Hmm. I, the, uh, every other book you can think of, they they think that this because they don't want to go to their congregation and say, "Oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna have to take a step back and revisit the the Bible from right. a flat flat Earth standpoint." Right. And there's and even so, the one uh, there's even the one flat Earth guy who's largely theological. I, uh, he's got uh, facial hair. I can't remember his face or his face, his name. I can't remember. Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba. There you go. Yeah, Rob Skiba. So he's. Yep. He would be kind of the extreme end of the tying in religion and and flat earth. Absolutely. He was one of my early conversions uh, back in 2015. As a matter of fact, he was one of the first guys that oh. interviewed me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I got him in two shows and I didn't even wasn't even trying. It just happened to be that way where okay. he heard me on a different podcast as he was driving to yeah. something and then listened to it again on the way back and said, I've got to, I got to bring this guy in my show. And I came on once and he was just blown away and by the time we did the second interview he's like you know what i'm going with this flat thing and he made a website called that's still up there today called testingglobe.com yeah where I've he goes through every chapter and verse that ever mentions it and says look it's it's a flat book it, it's the old the old stuff is true the what science started pitching to us about 500 years ago that's not it Right. So anyway, well, sorry, let me end let me end this part with this, sure. which is all the Christian people that I've talked to, the, the Christian leaders in this community have all said the same thing uh, quietly, which is we have never they have never seen a spiritual recruiting tool as strong as the flat earth topic. Because remember, by default, if it is a flat enclosed world, that means it was built by somebody. Right. Which means there was a creator. And if there's a creator, okay, you only got two roads you can go down. One is an advanced civilization that's much older and powerful than ourselves, and the other yeah. is God. Well, then you're just splitting hairs. So right. take yeah. it back. Yeah, where does it all begin? Gotcha. And uh, so, yeah, and that, that ties together something that, uh, you know, another question that I had was, uh, like, um, atheism you know I, I i find i'm just wondering about yeah the the ties between flat earth and faith and you're saying you're actually can you're actually confirming that they're stronger than uh than i even thought because i haven't heard oh, you say yeah. a lot about that i've, I've listened mm -hmm. to a, a lot of your uh, of your stuff and i haven't really heard you say a lot about that are you a regular church attender now or are you kind of more no no, no just um, more of a spiritual for me, and, and there's a reason for that, is because I have to put myself in a position where I cannot, look, I, I can't ignore the other the, the other four religions. If the five major houses are Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity, even though I was raised Christian, I can't ignore the other four. I can't. It'd, right. be, it'd be hypocritical of me to do so because they all have a stake in this. Right. And they would all actually, if, if the world was announced it was flat tomorrow, they would all have leverage against science. Right. We're all on the same team when it comes to that. The enemy here would be scientism. 
Uh, right. By that, I mean the when science decides to leap, jump the rails, and make huge leaps of faith, and then put their stamp on it, and say, "Oh no, that's absolute fact." Right. Even though we've got no evidence to support it, it's like, okay, well, you basically turned yourself into another religion. Right. So, uh, so no, I, I don't go to church on a on a regular basis, but I have a much much deeper understanding. In fact, I know more. I have learned more Bible verses in the last four years than I think I ever did growing up because of it. That's 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 really really interesting. Uh, I find that just yeah. fascinating. And and the scientism thing that you're talking about, I've experienced it, um, or I've I've heard it as well. Because I mean, one of the reasons I think I was interested in the flat Earth was because I've been going through a multi-year faith uh, crisis of some kind, mm -hmm. where um, my very first thought was, what if my faith in God, because I come from a Christian background as well. What if my faith in God is like the flat Earth? You know what I mean. I'm, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just blind to the fact that what I'm doing is crazy. You know, that was my first layer of the onion, and so I started listening to to uh, atheist um, speakers and found a lot of really good stuff. Like I really like Sam Harris and that kind of thing, but. Uh, not everything, uh, not everything about him. And, and, and part of, part of the thing for me is that there's this atheism first epistemology that, that goes into things these days. For some reason, it's like, well, first you got to be an atheist and yeah. then, uh, and then all this other stuff uh, follows suit. And, and, and it was, it's just kind of insulting to me because it seems a little bit unscientific to say, first, mm -hmm. you have to believe something that's not scientifically provable, you know, uh, and then you can be in the club of, of science, right? You're never, you're right. never, you're never fully scientific until then. So yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to that. And I'm interested in, in what you say about, um, the other religions and all that kind of thing. What, what's your knowledge of the breadth of the movement? Like, does it, does it go into other religious, um, communities? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you got to remember, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, and Christianity share a lot of the same stories. Right. So that that's not going to be tough at all. Uh, Hinduism, they're actually not not too far off either. In fact, there, we've had a lot of a lot of channels in both Hinduism side and Buddhism side. And of course, I don't know the languages that are tied to these, but I know that they're addressing flat Earth in a lot of videos online. So they're all, yeah, everybody's oh, okay. got so a... okay, so you've seen video, you've seen Flat Earth videos, like, in all kinds of languages that are Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. We only, got to remember, we only address the English-speaking ones. You know, everything right. that comes out of Australia and New Zealand and England and South Africa and the United States and Canada, yeah. uh, that's fine. But you can type in, if you want to have some fun, type in the word Flat Earth and convert it to another language, German or Spanish or yeah. uh, Russian, and then take that Russian word and throw it into Google. Right. And click on videos. It's amazing. It's everywhere. Right. It's absolutely everywhere. Well, I mean, heck, I'm doing I'm doing conferences this year. Last year, remember, it wasn't that big. Like, so I'm leaving for New Zealand a week from Tuesday, mm. New Zealand conference, Calgary right after that, Stockholm, Sweden. I'm going to be the only flat earth speaker there. UK in September, Mount Shasta, Amsterdam, and then we finish off the year in Dallas. Wow. When's the Calgary and one? Uh, the Calgary one is, I'm going to be there, this, I think it's the 17th and 18th. Of? Uh, May. Oh, of, okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, I'm yeah, going yeah, to look into that. I'm about three hours away. Flat, Flat Earth Conference Calgary. You'll, you'll find yeah. it. I'm going to advertise it. I'm going to have the, the, the woman who's promoting it on the show on Tuesday. Okay. So I guess one of the things I wanted to do was float by you um, a thought that I had about about flat earth and its connection to religion and sure. it, it might be hard to get out so forgive me you're much smoother with uh speaking on camera than i am do you have That's any broadcast okay. background by the way no other than your shows of done, flat earth? but i've done uh no i haven't had any broadcasting background but i did a lot of phone and software presentation work part okay. of my job for 20 years was traveling around the united states and outside the united states a little bit uh, teaching people about com boiling down complex software in either classroom environments and then mm -hmm. if i wasn't doing that i was on the phone doing conference calls with high stress clients that were having conflicts 
Okay. So I was always tied to speaking in some way. Right. Cool. Well, yeah, you're very good at it. I Thank remember you. Russell Brand was quite uh, thrown off by how how smooth your voice sounded. <laughs> I thought that was so well, good. Th- to be fair, well, you're Russell, quite lovely, and your voice is very beautiful, Mark Sargent. Well, <laughs> to to be fair, and thank you for that, uh, Russell Brand. I, I mean, he's got some great comedic timing. His voice is guy. not one of his strong suits because yeah. you know it's a high pitched English yeah. voice, and he can really get it up there high. I mean, he when he when he goes into the high oh, notes, yeah. it's like whoa. <laughs> he could have he could have worked for Monty Python. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, The thought that I had, which I'd like you to say what your thoughts on, is Mm -hmm. that, um, and I'm not thinking of a specific religion, I'm not thinking of Christianity or anything, just that that God is the ultimate human intuition. In other words, we don't see God directly, but there are all kinds of intuitions, like little things, little tiny things that add up. And at the end of the day, you just have this intuition that there is some consciousness or some creative principle or some creative force behind the universe that is God. I mean, God's the most convenient word to use for it. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're, you're and, the, the, there is so much fantastic detail in the design of this place. Qu- I do not believe in coincidence. I never have. Uh, coincidence for me is running into your neighbor at the grocery store. Mm. That's about it. It's like, oh, hey, you're shopping at the same time. Everything else right. is synchronicity. And by that, I mean when I – sorry to cut you off. No, that's good. But when I got into this as a thought experiment, I looked at the world and I said – not only was I looking, it's like, okay, how would we keep it a secret? But then I was looking in the eyes of God, dare I say, at least for a little while, looking at the design and going, some of this stuff, well, you know, all of it is brilliant. It right. is the most clever design I have ever. I couldn't. I, I'm a huge believer, you know, because I worked in the software industry for so long, of always improving, always updating, always updating. Right. I'm looking at this, going, that wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, it's all the design of it, with the exception of human beings, <laughs> and yeah. even human beings with all their conflict is is I think perfect. But it is it is perfect? The design is all the little things you see in nature scream intelligent design right scream the, you know uh, a creator with a with a grand plan sorry right. go yeah and so uh and you know even if even if our intuition is a lot less specific than what you just laid out you know that no coincidences it's it's very well designed even if our intuition isn't is more vague than that it still feels to me like it's a very natural and well, I mean, just a constant of human beings that that our intuition leads us towards God. And I feel like this is also quite vague. I feel like right now there is a war against intuition. It's not being fought by anybody specifically or in, there's no leading person. But right. in, intuition in in a scientific world gets more and more devalued. It, like and, and I'm not I'm not anti-science. I'm not anti-science at all. Um, but when science starts to, um, try to say that, you know, all spirituality and all this stuff is, is not, um, is not valid or just aberrations of our psychology, I feel like it's, it, it wears away at our, at, at our intuition because it's killing the ultimate end of our intuitions. And it's almost pushing that line further and further back. There's even a documentary called Insai. Have you watched that? Uh, no, I think you'd love it. It was on Netflix for a while. It's a really hard word to spell, but if you look up intuition documentary and it was the okay. first time I'd ever heard this said out loud and there are some really great thinkers in there and it was about just how intuition is being devalued and we're, we're, we're prioritizing the part of the brain that's more about administrative function, more about right. things that are, you know, straight ahead and, and, and understandable, discernible, even music, according to some people in the documentary even music is becoming more rhythmic because that's the part that your that your administrative brain can understand is that even mm-hmm. grid tempo rhythm so um my thought is that is that there are people who are somehow psychically kind of feeling this this anti intuition and right. flat earth comes along and they don't even realize it they are on the precipice of that already they're saying Right, like they're just tired of, of people being like, all of your intuitions are bullshit. 
You know what I mean? Well, and, and so and the, and flat, not, the flat and, earth comes along and and because they have felt like there's this world hidden away from them. And then the flat earth says, hey, there is a world hidden away from you. It's the fact that the earth is flat and it's being hidden from you. You know, so anyway, yeah. what do you think? And about it's not that and it's not just anti uh, anti intuition. Uh, you want a baser term for it because that's one of the things I do is it is ultra conformity which is they are beating into you on a regular basis. Now, look, we have the technology to do this. That, you know, 1984 has come, which right. is, and I've heard this from many, many people that have contacted me, usually in chat, not so much email and phone, which is conform. Why can't you be like everybody else? Conform. Mm. This is a crazy idea. Right. Rope it in. Society is built on conformity. You must you know, stay within the lines. Right. And those people just drive me insane because right. I try to tell them, going, you realize if you had your way and everybody conformed, you know, everyone became part of the pack, there'd be no creativity at all. Right. I go, I go, don't you understand? We're creative. You know, the big five create, you know, uh, uh, pictures, sculptures, music, dance, and literature. They all come from creative impulse. Right. And conformity is the en enemy of that. Yeah. And what and I like, what I like about this is the way you're characterizing it is exactly what what i've been thinking which it's not flat earth specific it's just right. it's just the idea that there are certain things that are dogma that they're they're just they're just given truth and i right. know i know that i'm going to get flack for this video i know that i'm kind of outing myself in a way i'm not a flat earther but i uh, as just saying that uh, you know we need actual we need to accept actual diversity of thought in this world because for every flat earth you know there'll be uh another movement that that seems um sure. that seems mad to people and and some of them might be absolutely necessary you know and 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 i'm not uh i'm not saying flat earth isn't necessary like uh uh so yeah but, but, to flat, me, but at the same time you're up you're you're right which is flat earth and i've said this many many times which is flat earth opens the mind up for everything mm. do i think flat earth is the end in itself no i, I do not right. uh, I've, always, I've always said that flat earth seems to be the picture frame for whatever the canvas is on the inside right you, know, you have to have flat earth to open everybody's mind up and then once everyone's in that place where it's like okay i'm willing to accept a lot more than i used to be able to i'm willing to not laugh right. i'm not mock people right yeah and then then it's like okay whatever it is it's it's honestly it feels like a setup to something bigger it's yeah. Like, okay. What's bigger? Uh, not many things. Only a couple that I can think of. Well, I picture. I know you talk about the Truman Show like structure, and I kind of almost picture um, becoming a flat earther must feel kind of like uh, Truman stepping through that door at the end yeah. of the movie and going into the, into the bigger world. Now, um, it, it, to me, there's there's a kind of beauty in stepping outside the expectations of society. Um, right. and, and, and being countercultural and really owning it. And that was another thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, in, in a way you're the ultimate heretic. Um, and mm. I don't say that with any kind of judgment. Uh, and I was wondering what you've experienced, what positive benefits you've experienced, uh, as a result of stepping through that door, because you have gone in, into interviews, I've seen you. Yeah, like where people just hate you or, or they're so <laughs> angry and you're so calm. And I'm like, oh, man, if I could get that, you know, like I, I, I'm not that. If somebody was that angry at me for something I believed in, I could not remain as cool. And it's because you're in the flat earth. You know, you right, don't give a shit. Right. You're out there, you know. Right. And so uh, what do you think about that? I'll stop talking. Uh, no, it's it's cool. The and and I have said this before, which is the reason why. And I don't, trust me, when I go into the interview, I have no expectations at all. Rarely, unless it's a fair, unless it's a bigger network, I won't even do the research on whoever it is. I'll yeah. be like, okay, let's just see what they got because I won't be hypocritical. I can't be. Here, here's I'm, I'm kind of stuck, which is I know people say, oh, you're so calm and and you you don't laugh, you know, you don't go after these people and you don't get all defensive. I'm going if I did it would be hypocritical because I used to be them and someone would eventually call me out on that. Which is look five years ago, I would have been on the other side of that screen. Right. I would have been on the other side of the microphone. And yeah. so when somebody comes at me and they say, and I, and you've probably heard me say this on different interviews. I say, look, man, it's okay. I understand you're really ticked off right now. And you don't even know yeah. why that's what I throw at people. I go, look, yeah. you're yelling and screaming. You don't even know why you're angry. 
Yeah. It's like, well, it's because because it's so ridiculous, right? Yeah. Right. It's like, well, who are you mad at? Me or the idea? Right. And it's be, yeah, you've hit the fence. You've hit a psychological fence of theirs. Here yes. there be dragons, and they've never yeah, it, you uh, and it, it's something I've thought about a lot because one of the reasons that people fight atheists and Christians or whatever it is is because they'd really love to to walk out in the world and feel like, hey, we're all part of the same story. You know, we're all part of the same thing. I'd like to talk to the person who's selling me coffee and know, hey, that guy fits into my, you know, this world in my head that exists. And it really, I mean, it's legitimately disturbing to people that someone yeah. like yourself lives in a world like the world that you inhabit is so different than theirs. And it, yeah. it's disturbing to them. Anyway, I, I don't and, know where and I mean. it's also it's also the only conspiracy you can't run away from, which right. is different. You know, again, I, I, I'm not going to rattle them all off. We all know there's a whole bunch of conspiracies out there. Every one of those you don't have to look at. You'd be like, nope, not going to look at it. And you can walk away. Mm. Flat Earth, really tough to walk away from. Yeah. Really, really tough. I mean, uh, it's not something you can bury in the desert. Yeah. Even, even for me, uh, I was listening to a uh, Hardcore History the other day you know, that show, Dan Carlin. Um, and he was talking about the okay. cold war. Uh, he was talking about the, he's basically about nuclear pro proliferation, talking about the mm -hmm. cold war. And I couldn't stop thinking about how the cold war would be the perfect. Cause that would have been around that right around the time that we discovered the earth was for real, that the earth was flat in the flat earth lore. Right. right like, right, right. so, uh, the, I, I was thinking, Oh yeah, the, the cold war would have been the ultimate way to get people's minds off of or to to hide or to totally obliterate people thinking about the, this new discovery that we have. So I, I'm wondering if you have uh, any insights into history, like something like the Cold War and maybe what you think, what you think the geopolitical beginnings of of the flat earth would have been. You know what it I mean? was, I imagine it was very, very difficult for them to deal with. Remember, what we're talking about here is the best and brightest of, of our civilization didn't even figure it out until about 1960. Even then, the, the, the best we had didn't know it. And mm -hmm. then they figured it out about 1960. It's like, okay, what do you do with this information? Well, if you know any government. Okay, at this point, there was a technical issue. Mark froze up. We took a couple of minutes to get it sorted and pick up with the conversation again. Thank you for your patience. Okay, we're back, and we were talking about the sort of geopolitical history of the flat Earth. Go. Right. So imagine if our best and brightest didn't figure this out until about 1960, and by that, United States and the Soviet Union. Mm. Well, they have a really difficult choice to make on their hands back then because remember back in 1960 most people didn't even own televisions in the entire world radio was a thing newspapers were a thing yeah so what do you do because in fact one out of every 10 people ask me it's like well why keep it a secret why why not even why, why not just fess up and it's like well you, you've got some potential problems there uh one would be academic the second would be economic and the third of course would be uh, religious uh, academically every university in every country would have to be retooled literally from the ground up. There's just uh, every physical science would have to be overhauled. The world markets would have to be suspended for several months, even now until you could figure out how the dust was going to settle. And then of course the, the five major religious houses, you know, the, the five I mentioned earlier all now have leverage against science and you're asking them to show restraint. <laughs> it, even though for five centuries science has been beating them over the head with textbooks uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do even for buddhism right so it is a tough geopolitically it is one of the toughest things ever to do because okay how do we keep this thing a secret you know if, if human beings didn't build this can they keep it a secret well yeah they can actually for a while it's not permanent so, you know it's like i i kind of joke it's like hiding cigarettes from your roommate you can move it around the house here and there, but sooner or later, the odds are going to go against you and they're right. going to find the cigarettes. Right. And that's what we're talking about here, which is all it is for the major powers that be, the governments and the ultra rich, uh, would be uh, just time and money. And yeah. so the lie started out fairly small by comparison, create a, a brand new space agency called NASA in 1958. Uh, the Soviet Union had their thing and just kind of militarized space and started off small. Well, then NASA all of a sudden got 
a lot more federal funding and then employees. And now they have thousands of people. It's, 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 own, it's an economy unto itself. Right. Not to mention the other space agencies, which are, you know, the Japanese and the Europeans, the Chinese, even the Israelis supposedly yeah. landed a probe. I'm sorry, crashed a probe on the moon just last week. Oh, is that right? And between all those things, you're it, it kind of spider webbed. You know, the old saying, um, you know, the web of lies, you know, and that it just kind of spread out from there to where now we're spending billions and billions and billions of dollars to try to keep this thing under wraps and it's been failing recently mostly because of what i mentioned earlier which was uh, the future that we were supposed to have in all the different aspects of our lives the jetsons future from and every futuristic movie we've ever had and every futurist and every what was it world's fair and theme park it's like here's what the future is going to be in 30 years robot servants flying cars you know, all yeah. sorts of you know, laser guns never, ever happened with the right. exception of one thing. And that was the information and the media. Um, think about, I mean, th think about what the tools in a simple smartphone, this stupid little thing. It's not even state of the art. I try to explain this to someone even 50 years ago. Right. It's almost, I mean, the, the stuff that's packed into this thing. We've got basically the informational tool of the gods now. Uh, between the, everything's connected and we're talking about a massive network which is the future that yeah. that was no doubt uh, that worked but that also worked against them because now people all over the place can share notes with each other you and I you know if, if I have a if I was like hey this if I have a, a, a scientific proof or an observation or whatever it is I can share it with, with you and everybody I know instantly and and you there's no doubt that the other people are going to see us and they can share it and it spreads everywhere so right. that has worked against them so geopolitically they did what they could they dragged their feet they dragged their feet on the future for as long as they could the better part of six decades and yeah. only now has it started to part of the answer to what you were asking earlier on which was why now right. it's like well because we've reached this this the pinnacle of our infrastructure yeah. it's not going to get any easier than this the right. internet's about as fast as it's going to be. Everything's streaming. Everything's instant. Everything's swipe right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. The, they, they now have to, they've gotten to a point where they have to either finally give this to the public or shut it down entirely. Right. And I don't think they can, they can do the latter. There you go. It's my long-winded okay. answer. No, no problem. How do you view then the, like, I guess to, to, to you, there must be a, a um, an inevitable moment of just final disclosure. There's no hiding it anymore. Uh, you you can't you can't do it with just a press announcement. It's not right. going to work. the The UN is never going to publish a thing saying say it's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's not going to be like a lot of science fiction movies that are out there. Although it will have to be like some science fiction movies, which is yeah. you you have to do it as sort of a you you got to segue it in. Otherwise, it's going to be too jarring for the public. Okay. And which means you've got to either tie it in with very, it's a very short list that you can tie this into because flat earth is huge. It's mm. huge. And so it's like, okay, what can you blend in with it to soften the blow? Either a major celestial event, which would be staged mm. via some sort of technology or some sort of advanced race disclosure where it's like, uh, okay. oh yeah, by the way, here are the very tall, beautiful blue people from Avatar. Right. Turns out they're real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they've got a few things yeah. to say to you. And all they have to do, I mean, it's, it, this would be a great, I mean, I could write this, which was they, they come out and they'd say, oh, yeah, by the way, the world isn't what you think it is. And you can't fault your governments because we told them to do it. There's your <laughs> ultimate out. Okay. Seriously, if they yeah. come up, whoever lands yeah. in the giant golden spaceship and says, yeah, by the way, don't blame your government. We told them they had to do it. It's required. It's part of yeah. the protocol. Everyone would be like, oh, okay. And that would be it. No one would right. claim anything. No lawyer in their right <laughs> mind would ever sue. There'd be no class action yeah. lawsuit over all the, the billions and billions of dollars worth of economic fraud. That, because it, cause, and, cause you can't let it get that far. Sorry, let me, let me segue well, into yeah, one more ahead. thing. Which is, people say, why don't you do a class action lawsuit against NASA or a space agency? It's like, did, did you not understand what too big to fail meant 10 years ago? I mean, that was just an insurance company. You go after NASA, a military, oh, yeah. a branch of the United States military, and you say, oh, yeah, we want to we want to sue them into the ground where they don't exist anymore. They are too big to yeah, fail. No, you won't win that one. 
but no, you're not going to win that. So, you, and it's too negative. So you, you yeah. try to do a positive spin on it and yeah, you, it, but it can be done. It absolutely can be released. And because of these, you can get everybody Remember the old criminal saying, it's like, okay, everybody get their story straight. This gets the story straight. This, right. regardless if there's, if there's people out there that don't buy whatever this says, if you, if whoever's in power releases some sort of flat earth angle on this thing, mm -hmm. this works. Right. We know this, you know, and, and everyone, because if 99% of the people look at their phones and go, oh yeah, I, you know, I believe whatever this thing says, they're going to go with that. Right. So in your mind, when this, uh, disclosure were to happen, if this disclosure were to happen, um, what do you see happening societally there? Do you see a big return to uh, some kinds of, of faith and some kind of spirituality? Do you see people going crazy and 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 clawing at the edge of the cage, feeling trapped? No, no. In depression? fact, I was really good. That's a great question because I was worried when I first did this. I thought I was doing the math in my head. And I said, there's going to be a fraction of a percentage that's not going to be able to take it. It's going to be too much. They're going to they're going to crack. And I was waiting for that. As this thing spread and spread, I'm going, okay, waiting for the guy, you know, whoever it is that's going to. In fact, Jared and I joked when Jared, somebody up in Canada, took a boat and spray painted Jaredism and all this flat earth stuff in a boat and put it in the parking lot of a mall. We're like going, okay, it's going to explode. You know, we're watching on the news going, it's going to it's gonna catch fire. Someone's, it's like it's, it was unattended. It's going to end badly. And it didn't. In fact, we did hundreds of regional meetups and conferences everywhere. And we never had an incident. Yeah. There has never been because flat earth is different from any other conspiracy. It's got a real positive angle to it. Yeah. And remember, there's people, a lot of people. I've got a I've got a, a playlist on my channel that's almost 300 tracks long of positive songs about flat earth and just about every right. genre you can think of. Well, that is I, one you of the can't things, say that about anything else. Yeah, that's one of the things that I have noticed. And I think it ties back into that uh, that heretic thing where you've crossed the line now. It's almost like uh, a person who has accepted the flat earth and is part of that community, uh, you know, it's, it feels like they've got nothing to fear but fear itself. You know what I mean? They've right. done the ultimate. They've done the they've taken the ultimate step in a way. Uh, right. And psychologically, I think that would have a lot of like, uh, you know, positive benefits. I guess I guess the one thing you're probably. Uh, you know, you, you'd really love to see would be a prominent scientist, uh, uh, mm -hmm. well-known scientist to to cross the line openly. Like, uh, you know, uh, well, if Neil deGrasse Tyson said it, then we would uh, then then we would all just believe it. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, that, oh, that, yeah, yeah, he's he is the face of science. Yeah. And I'm sorry that like a lot him. of scientists don't like him. But he is the face of science. He's mm. really good on stage. Yeah, he's a great public speaker, so and he's got a lot of charisma. Yeah, but and and I know your your regular you know your garden variety scientist going. That's not what science is about. Where nobody's like it. It's, you're absolutely right. No, he's, he's he fits a demographic that you do not have. You know, he's mm. he's a he's a good looking, well spoken African American yeah. uh, who could literally. I mean, honestly, if he wasn't doing science, he could sales pitch anything. Yeah. He could be working for any industry and do as well he's with brilliant. what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, somebody like that, um, crossing the floor, I guess, to being a flat earther would be, uh, w w would be a big coup for, uh, it would be, it would be very, very tough to do. And you gotta remember because of the, how much money it takes to get an education like that. Mm. And when you get there, all you care about is being published and your community. Yeah. And you could be ostracized like that. Yeah. You don't want to risk it. You're not going to risk it. You you've dedicated your life to being part of this clique, yeah. and nobody has left that clique, and nor nor would they. I mean, unless unless they left it as like a group, unless there was right. a financial gain for them to leave the clique, or they didn't care about the community so much. It's like you know what, I'm just going to do this and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. You know, kind of like Kyrie Irving, the basketball player. That was a perfect right. example. Yeah, yeah. Where. Yeah. He was tw he was 25 years old. He had won his ring, friends with LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, he had nothing to lose. Yeah. That's what he thought. And he's like, but he forgot that it's like, look, they're not, they're not gonna let this go. They're because remember, you, what people don't know is when you're a professional basketball player, the reporters are in the locker room every game. Right. After every game, they come in. You see the same guys. What do you think they're gonna do? When they get bored, it's like so. so what was this flat Earth stuff? So did he? Did he experience? Uh, like, forgive me, I don't know the story exactly. I know that Kyrie Irving is a flat earther, but uh, did he experience like some terrible backlash? 
Oh, huge backlash. Well, I mean, not with his contract or anything, okay, because okay. remember, he had won his title before he came out, just right. before he came out. That's, again, one of the reasons he came out. It's like, yeah. I am bulletproof. Right. Yeah. What are you going to do to me? I'm 25. I'm rich. <laughs> and, right. and, and I've got my ring. What are right. you going to do to me? Right. And then he realized, it's like, oh, wait, they can bring this up every single press conference. And there are a lot, especially if you're a champion. Right. And he, then he got traded to uh, Boston because he was he was so big and powerful that he could, you know, he became a marquee player over in Boston, completely new market and, the, you know, a whole new team. But as long as you're winning, they don't care so much. Right. In fact, if he wins another championship, they're going to be they're <laughs> They're going to give him cut him some more slack. Luckily, yeah. I'm grateful that he came out. I'm absolutely grateful that he came out. Yeah. But at the same time, other people have looked at him as sort of the benchmark. It's like, OK. If he's having a hard time, what's going to happen to me? Right, because I'm nobody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, fair enough. Um, and this has been really fascinating. Uh, Got to wrap it up for now because, um, yeah, just my family will be home soon. But uh, okay. anyway, uh, Mark, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I'm a fan, and, uh, and, and I do appreciate that there are people out there with uh, truly alternative viewpoints and and in that way i celebrate you in the flat earth and Thanks. so um yeah um this has been this has been really great i'm gonna see uh i'm gonna check into maybe heading down to that calgary conference because uh yeah I uh, do. i'd love to shake your hand buy you a beer i don't know if you drink beer i do okay well then maybe that'll happen i don't know but uh okay. anyway uh thank you very much is there is there anything is there anything that's come to your mind through this interview that you wanted to say or you kind of got everything out that you wanted to say based um, on my questions you know it's not often that that people will look at this and say hey you know open-mindedness is a good thing i know that conformity uh builds empires i know that you know i'm not an idiot when it when it comes to that you need people to fall in line and and you need people to to, to believe what the government tells you, but understand that there are conspiracies in just about every aspect of our lives. You know, it's just what we're willing to look at and what we're not willing to look at. Mm. And uh, I'll, I'll say with this, which is kind of a cliche, and you've heard me say it before, but I'll end it with this, which is <clears throat> don't believe anything I say, do your own research and ask questions. Yeah. Uh, if you think you have a good beat on things, if you think you're, if you get up every morning, your life is absolutely wonderful, everything is awesome, thumbs up, Hey, great. Don't look at flat earth. Don't do it. Because <laughs> yeah. when you go through this, the tunnel of flat earth that you have to go through, the gauntlet, the yeah. crucible, it is something. And yeah. when you and you don't think you're gonna make it. And then when you make it off the other side, you look back and you're just going, huh, wasn't that big a deal? <laughs> so well there you go. for myself, I I have to say it, if there in the future, if I hear that you got convinced the earth was round i'll say you know I'll, I'll 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 tip my hat and say good for you you went as far as you could with this if i also hear in the future that the earth is flat i will say good for you and i will tip my hat to mark Sargent. <laughs> uh, so uh it's been a great cool. pleasure uh thank you. thank you very much and yeah have a great rest right. of your day all right thanks man okay bye bye bye, -bye.